We are back finishing our family pajamas today and we are talking about how to customize store-bought shirts. So last week we talked about how to make pajama pants, cloning them from existing comfy pants that you already have to try and keep those expenses down at Christmas. Today we're going to talk about the pajama tops. Now I just use store-bought t-shirts. Yes, I could make everybody t-shirts, but honestly there's just so much to do this time of year and it's cheaper, it's faster, so why not? Last year we did vinyl. These are our ones from last year. So I used my brother cutter and I, we just cut out the vinyl and we ironed them on and they worked fantastic. But because we got the stretch vinyl, because especially for, for the girls in the family, we need, we need a little stretch, uh, it was kind of pricey for all that vinyl. So I thought maybe this year I would try my hand at screen printing. So let's learn about this together. I am still going to use my vinyl cutter in order to make my screen printing stencil, but I'm gonna do 100% DIY. I'm making my own screen. Um, I'm, making, I'm making everything. So uh, we'll see how this works. All right, so the first thing I need to do is clear off my space and I need to get my cutter and my computer out because that's really where this project starts. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring you into my computer for a second and show you a couple things. So first of all, I am right now just in lovesvg.com. Um, I'm not affiliated with them at all. I just really like their website. They have a lot of free stuff. Um, and so that's what I'm using. This one was completely free. So I'm going to use Merry Christmas, You Filthy Animal over here. Um, if you were living under a rock for the 90s, then you might not know that's a Home Alone reference, which is a movie that uh, Home Alone and Home Alone 2 that my family and I like serial watch all through the holidays. So um, I'm going to choose this one. And I'm going to do different colors with this um, that go with our pajamas. But for now, I just go down and I download right here. Then I'm going to go into my Canvas workspace or, you know, you might have a Cricut or whatever you have. Um, I'm going to open that file. There it is. Uh, now, typically, if you were going to put this on a shirt with iron on vinyl, um, you would want to flip it so that it was backwards. And this would make it so that you would cut from the back, then you would weed it, and then you would flip it over to uh, put it onto your shirt. However, I'm going to leave mine and I'm going to cut it out just like this because I want to have my vinyl on the underside of my screen so that I'm not like scraping my vinyl every time I am scraping my um, paint across my screen. So I just wanted to show you that really quick. All right, next I'm just going to duplicate my image um, and then I'm going to create my color separation. So I'm just removing everything that I want black from one image and I'm gonna remove everything that I want red from the other image. Um, I know in this program you can totally like highlight groups of things and remove them all together, but <laughs> just, I always manage to like grab things that I shouldn't. So I just move everything one at a time. So I'll regroup everything and as you can see, I have my whole image there, but it's split into two pieces. So, so now I'm just going to airdrop this to my machine, put my vinyl on, and I'm gonna cut that. And the thing that I really love about doing this project this way is that I have vinyl from old projects that I will probably never want to use that color again. And so it's just been hanging around and now it's not gonna go to waste because it really doesn't matter what color of vinyl I make my screens out of, um, it's not gonna affect the ink. All right, so here I am, I am weeding out, well, I, I obviously have a little helper, um, but in the shot, it kind of looks like I have one big hand and one little hand. <laughs> so my little helper is helping me to weed out the letters. 
Now I have this sheer fabric and when I looked at one of the speedball um, screens at Michael's, it basically just looked like it was made with sheer fabric. So I'm gonna give that an iron. This is just stuff that I had in my stash that I used ages ago for another project. Um, so again, I'm just like using up old stuff in my stash, which I love. So I pressed that out so that it's um, nice and flat. And I'm going to be using, well, I'm gonna do some of my screens on these hoops for embroidery and the rest I'm gonna use the frames from these dollar store, like super cheap canvases. Um, I'm gonna pull the canvas out and I'll save those for another project, but I'll have the frames um, to use for this. So I just need to make sure that my fabric is going to be big enough that it will wrap around the frame. Once I have my fabric cut out so it's the appropriate size, I'm gonna apply my vinyl. Now I press that uh, as the manufacturer's instructions say with a cloth on top. I'm just using a pillowcase because that's what was easy to grab. But I found that it still kind of wasn't getting hot enough. Um, so I ended up just going back over it with only parchment paper on top of it and that worked really well. And then I flipped it over and ironed it again. I'm really glad that I put parchment paper underneath it because as you can see um, by the puckering, the adhesive on the vinyl sort of bled through and um, adhered it to the parchment paper, which peeled away easily. But had I left that on my ironing board without parchment paper under it, it might have caused a problem. There we go, I've got it all ironed on. I've waited for it to cool, so now I can go and peel my plastic off of my vinyl. And I'm just gonna press it one more time just to make sure it's like super good and stuck on. All right, next I need to prepare my frames. So I'm just gonna pop the canvas out of here and I can absolutely reuse this canvas cloth for an art journal project or gosh, who knows what, but it'll get used, it won't go to waste. And here we go, it's all cleaned out. Now I'm going to place my frame around my image and remember I have adhered the vinyl so that it is on the underside of my mesh fabric. And before I fix that onto my frame, I'm just gonna trim that because I don't want tons of excess fabric. I want just enough to pull up around the edges. All right, so I'm gonna use tuck tape to stick this on for a couple of reasons. Number one, it was in my garage. Number two, it is crazy sticky. And it's actually made to stick to unlike surfaces together. That's like basically its function. That's why it's used for insulating, sticking vapor barrier down and all that kind of stuff. So um, the way that I'm going about this is I'm starting with the center points on each length. If you've ever upholstered, this will make total sense to you. But if not, don't worry about it. You'll catch on. Now, when I'm putting the tape on, I'm actually adhering it to the fabric first and then I'm able to sort of use the tape to pull the fabric taut. There we go, once I have my four centers done, then I'm gonna work from the center out to each corner. And I'm just doing it in this way so that I can make sure that every time I'm pulling on the fabric, that I'm not just pulling too much on one side, I'm pulling evenly as I work my way around. All right, there we go. Now the last thing I need to do is go around the edges um, and make sure that none of my ink is going to be able to sort of slide out under the frame or in any um, open patches. So again, I'm just using tuck tape. You could use masking tape if you want, but I really feel like tuck tape is going to have more longevity, um, especially if you're going to end up washing your screen out and then wanting to reuse it. So I'm just going around with tuck tape and making sure that all the edges are sealed and my tuck tape is attached to the side of the frame and then curves down onto my screen. And I'm making sure to get the corners really well too. All right, there we go. They're not pretty, but they will function, I promise. So as you can see, I have two different sizes for my large one. Um, and then I've got two circles uh, which need to be offset. Now, typically, if you were doing screen printing, your screens would be the exact same size, and then you could use matching points to easily place them to make sure that um, on all the corners that things matched up, and then your images would be perfect when you did your color separations. I was using what I had on hand, so uh, we're gonna kinda have to wing some different ways to create matching points, but we'll get to that. All right, so here are some t-shirts. Ooh, I'm getting so excited at this point. 
Now I do have parchment paper inside my shirt. It's not really necessary. I just, I didn't have any extra shirts and I was a little concerned because I'd never used this ink before. Um, but in the end it was fine. Like I didn't actually have to do that. Here's my test swatch, um, which the ink did go through, but it was a different kind of fabric. Um, and as you can see, there's sort of like a red dot underneath one of my images. That's because my tape had a bubble in it and it allowed some ink to get through. So make sure that you test your screens out first, just so you can find anything like that. Um, so afterwards I did grab that screen and uh, I went and just stuck another like piece of tape where that weak spot was. All right, this is the ink that I'm using. It is Speedball Fabric Screen Printing Ink. Um, I just ordered it on Amazon. I'll link it below. It does say that it's not for use for nylon, but it can be used in fabric and paper and cardboard. Um, and then there are instructions on the sides, but I do recommend going online and getting more thorough instructions. It says to heat set it on the package, but it doesn't say for how long. Um, for my squeegee, I'm just using a lid from yogurt that I've trimmed out and um, should work fine. All right, uh, pardon my big head in the way, but I really need to see what I'm doing here. All right, so I placed my first screen and now I'm just using a paintbrush to sort of scoop some of the ink onto my screen and I'm scooping it into the corner. I'm not putting it over top of the image at all yet. And now I'm just using my yogurt lid to scrape that ink across my screen. And sometimes there'll be like this little line um, from the edge of your scraper, um, just because typically they would use a scraper that was the same length as the screen, but I'm not doing that. So you just wanna make sure that one of those lines doesn't wind up on your image. And this is a misprint, Ugh. Okay. So as you can see, part of the S is missing and the top of the letters in Mary uh, could be a little bit crisper. What happened here? Plain and simple, I was excited and I went too fast and I didn't scrape my squeegee across it enough times in enough directions. But it's okay, we can absolutely fix this and we will come back to that in a few minutes, but first let me do the rest of these. All right, so I'm going to place my screen on my second shirt and I am not washing it or rinsing it or anything. Um, adding water at this point would just make the whole thing a mess. So you just have to commit. When you place it down, you're, you're placing it down. Now I'm loading up with a little bit more ink. And this time I'm really gonna take my time and make sure that I squeegee that ink all over. I'm gonna go in all different directions and I'm really working to make sure that I'm pushing the ink through the screen and into the fabric. And there we go, it came out perfectly. And so did number three. So I only have three in this size that I'm gonna do. Um, and then I have the little kids shirts which are done with a smaller size screen. So I'm just gonna hit this with a blow dryer to move things along faster and then I can do my black layer. Before I go and do my black layer though, I'm just gonna go back with a detail brush and I'm just gonna fix that S from the first one. Uh, fortunately, there is enough of an imprint of the letter that it's pretty easy for me to just go over it with a detail brush and I'm using the smallest brush that I have so that I can take many passes and really make sure that I'm pushing that ink into the fabric. And then I'm also just going to make sure that I touch up and sort of fill out the top of the letters in Mary because they were a little bit faint as well. All right, there we go. And once again, I'm just going to hit it with a blow dryer. All right, once those are all dry, it's time to match up my other screen. Now, I don't have matching points, so I'm actually going to line up with the very center of the top, which is that center R. And I also know that my yaw needs to line up with the snowflakes. So um, I'm gonna put a piece of tape off to the side too, but I'm gonna sort of have it out a little bit because I need room for that antler to be able to print. Now I'm adding my black ink to my second screen and I'm just gonna follow the same process that I did for the red. I did find it actually would have been helpful to have a larger frame for this screen. Um, it's kind of hard when things are printed too close to the edges, but it still worked. And voila, there we go. One completed image. Now I'm going to remove my tape 
and I'm just gonna hit it with the blow dryer one more time. Once you've dried it thoroughly, you need to heat set it. If you don't do this, it will just wash out. Um, and I looked it up online and you have to heat set it for three to five minutes on both sides of the fabric. Now, seriously, set yourself an alarm on your phone or whatever, a timer, whatever you have, but set yourself a timer because I don't know about you, but three to five minutes of ironing for me feels like about three to five years and I will do anything to allow my brain to tell me that I've been ironing for as long as I need to. So three to five minutes on one side with the parchment paper on top and then three to five minutes on the other side as well. There's no point in doing all that work just to have it wash out. Well, there you have it. Those are our Christmas shirts made up and ready to go. And I am so excited about it. So I can fold everything up, put them in the Christmas Eve boxes that we make for our kids. And yeah, it's just one more tradition in the bag, ready to go. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you share it out. And if you haven't already, subscribe down below and I will see you next time.